Oh, hello. Welcome to a lockdown lounge that doesn't know whether it's coming or going. Voluntarily locked down is me, Aaron Bliss, while locked up for a night in the drunk tank is Mike Large. How you doing, Mike? <coughs> yeah, great. <laughs> well, we're in, uh, where are we? We're sort of in the early weeks of July and things are looking a bit different now. Tonight's theme, Mike, Super Saturday and the, uh, or I guess all the paraphernalia that goes with that. Uh, the alliterative nonsense that Boris Johnson used to describe it, which was shorthand for the easing of lockdown on various businesses and activities, I guess. Opening thoughts, yeah. Mike? Bold move. <laughs> Bold move. Uh, um, I, I, think, I think that it was always... There was going to be a time, wasn't there, mm-hmm. where 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 it happened. Just it was just a matter of when, and here we are. We... I'm reminded of your classic quote, Mike, um, about you give people an inch and they'll fucking take a mile. <laughs> yeah, I take it that's what. I think I think that's what you and probably me to a certain extent thought was was the inevitable consequence of Super Saturday and the continual easing of lockdown. I mean, we should say as well that the the whole Super Saturday stuff was limited to England, so the other devolved nations have not eased their restrictions in it on anything like the, the um, same level. But I think it's fair to say, Mike, probably both of us, particularly you thought there could be a disaster in in store because I think a combination of reasons but something you've touched upon a few times is people generally can't be trusted (laughs) let's reacquaint ourselves with exactly what this lockdown easing was about two different households can now officially socialize indoors in public or private you can visit family at home friend's house for a meal or spend time indoors with someone who's not generally from your household. Uh, Although you cannot gather indoors in groups of more than two households. Oh God, you do not always have to meet with the same household. You can meet with different households as long as it is not at the same time. I mean, what fucking sense does that make? Social distancing must still be observed where possible, even if meeting another household inside their home. I mean, that's just ridiculous, but uh, you cannot hold or attend celebrations like parties or receptions unless it is possible to maintain social distancing. Uh, The six people from different households outside is still the rule. Uh, But some of the big things, you can stay overnight away from your home, including camping, holiday homes, or going to a second home. Although I know some people are already doing that, usually people involved with the government. Uh, The rules regarding meeting with other households apply and only two different households may socialize under a roof at the same time. Uh, again, ad- advising people not to use public transport when possible. Uh, obviously, different rules for people shielding. So restaurants were allowed to open. I believe they were supposed to open just exclusively al fresco, or at least have minimum social distancing in place, including things like one-way system things on the floor. Pubs and bars, obviously, we know. Uh, I was under the impression, again, that they can only do table service outside, but apparently that wasn't the case. Uh, Cinemas, uh, visitor attractions like museums and galleries, uh, bingo halls, outdoor skating rinks, amusement arcades, and other entertainment centres and model villages. Uh, Well, we do know know some people would be happy about that, or certain in particular. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, sorry, (laughs) carry on. Uh, so to be fair, it, m- most of the economy is opening up. Some some notable exceptions, indoor gyms, bowling alleys, and indoor skating rinks. Oh, and indoor swimming pools. In fact, I think all swimming pools um, are still, still forbidden, although I'm sure that won't be too long. Hotels, again, uh, things like hotels, campsites, and caravan parks are allowed to open, but I'm sure they've been pressed upon the need for, uh, obviously, 
very rigorous hygiene and social distancing where possible etc etc and of course outdoor gyms are allowed to open libraries community centers places of worship all these kind of things now something mike that i know you've been taking advantage of is the barbers and hairdressers is that right Fucking right yeah is, uh, right i'm sure as everyone everyone will notice you've gone from you, you've you've ruined your your Alison Becker look, perhaps because you've already won the title now. So. <laughs> you've lost your edge, basically, a lot like the actual Alison Becker. <laughs> but yeah, you're looking sharp, Mike. I'm sure. Thanks. Yeah, I'm sure everyone appreciates your new look. So, are, yeah. are you happy, Mikey? Obviously, you've taken advantage of the uh, the hairdressing thing. Anything? Else? I had to. Yeah. No. Just, just the haircut I needed to get that big, thick, dark mop that was on my head <laughs> off of my head, uh, especially if the weather is going to start getting nice again. So that's true. Uh, depending that's true. on when you watch this, uh, we've just had a fairly shit week of weather. Preceding that was a fantastic week. Um, weather was mm-hmm. supposed to get good again, so I can't, I can't deal with it the heat with a big fucking mop on my head. I overheat <laughs> as it is. I had to get it done. I, I, as soon as uh, my barber was was taking uh, was like taking appointments, open for appointments, I was like, get get me in any time, any day, don't care. <laughs> fucking first one, get me in. Yeah, and he was like, yeah. right, I'll see you at three thirty a.m. You're like, yeah, no problem. I've done it. I've done it. But um, yeah, so yeah, mop chop so, today. Happy with that. So you weren't ty- were you not tempted at all to head down Weatherspoons six a.m. on Saturday? No, no, no. Do you really. know anyone? Do you know anyone who who was like really digging that up and yeah. going to get absolutely fucking trolley the second that the booze are open? Yeah, I do, and so do you. Uh, yeah, but no, I just um, don't. You know, I, I've, I've touched on it before. I, I can't wait for a vaccine. Yeah, I can't wait for a vaccine. <laughs> I just, I'm so excited. No, I can't wait to be able to go to a pub, ask for a beer, sexy lady behind the bar is going to pour me a pint, Pass it over the bar along with her number, and then, <laughs> and then you know, there we go. Like I can't wait. I, there is something I miss about it, and probably, I think, you know, some of it's the social stuff, and some of it's just because I've been told I can't. And obviously, you know, although I am superhuman. Um, Godlike, some may say, in many ways. I am still human. I know, try and remember. So, you know, like everyone else, when you're told you can't do something, it kind of makes you want to do it a bit more. Um, but, you know, and, and as, as great as I think that'll be, um, I wasn't in any rush to run down to the local tavern on uh on saturday i just yeah no. yeah no i'm 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 on a similar mindset um did you um so i think it's fair to say mike i think we should we always trump it when we're right particularly about stuff about human nature we're always quick to with our withering hot takes on these kind of things i think maybe we should we should hold our hands up this time you know things Things didn't go as badly as we potentially projected. I mean, people were thinking of like, I mean, to be fair, when I was reading, reading about the aftermath of uh, Super Saturday, you know, people were saying, oh, well, you know, the, the catastrophe and the widespread riots and disorder that people were predicting haven't happened. And like, I don't remember us ever really saying that. It was more like, there's going to be a bunch of puffins who are not socially distancing and probably spreading the virus because 
they've completely forgotten there's a pandemic because the government says they can go to the pub, so it's like, yeah, let's, 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 and all like crammed it together, um, spreading the filth, whatever. Now that actually did happen. Maybe, maybe not yeah. widespread. I mean, there were famous pictures from um, Street in Soho, weren't there? Yeah, I mean, come on, it happened. It happened fucking of course everywhere. He did. I think he didn't. He's stupid. And, <laughs> uh, I think. Because because I think it, it actually led to a statement from, I don't know if it was the Met or just the General Police Federation. They made a statement and said it's crystal clear that um, drunk people can't socially distance. And it made me... Shock. Think, yeah, it made, just, it made me think, like, how much are you getting paid as a police chief? Because me and Mike said that, like, right off the bat, and we're not getting paid to say that shit. So I thought that was, like, a bit Captain Obvious. Maybe Maybe the name of the police chief was Captain Obvious. But... That should have been very evident. <laughs> that should have been very evident for the government, surely. I mean, everyone knows that. In fact, we know that Boris Johnson knows that when, when he announced it. You know, it's, it's, it's very, I find it very incredibly cynical for a leader to say something like, you know, picture opportunity with a pint in their hand. Uh, we need to, we, it's our, our liberation day. We need to enjoy this. We need to get out to the pubs and support our local breweries, taverns, whatever. And then, you know, a few hours later, just like, uh, we need to be sensible. I hope people remember to social distance. And it, it's just it's quite cynical. And again, it plays into this whole idea that we've discussed before that I'm not going to labour the point of. But knowing, seeing the, uh, the, th- the um, scenes in, in Soho, which we haven't seen widespread evidence that it happened everywhere, but obviously in big cities, you imagine it's quite likely that those scenes were repeated. I went to Oxford at the weekend on Sunday. Um, was walking around with the missus, and we walked past a few pubs. After a minute, I raised an eyebrow because people were sitting indoors, which I actually didn't think was allowed. Obviously, they they take you know the, I'm not blaming the establishment. They taken certain steps, like almost all the windows were thrown open. But the people inside were sat on adjacent tables, no face coverings completely relaxed and i thought is that is that really in the spirit of trying to stop the spread of the virus but i digress That's mike do you wow. i was gonna i was gonna say mike knowing what? What, knowing what we know about human nature what we've seen in soho what i've seen in in parts of oxford and what we know will happen yeah do you think at the moment we're <clears throat> We're, we're almost in an Ouroboros situation. I don't know if you've heard the reference. Ouroboros is the snake constantly eating its own tail. <clears throat> Do you think we're, that's, yeah. yeah, that's kind of where we are in terms of the virus. We're just eating our own tail all the time. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it that way. <clears throat> no? I, don't, I, I, I way just think... Oh, I can think of a few choice words for the way that we're handling it. <laughs> Don't hold back. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, look, like I said before, this um, next stage of relaxation with regards to the rules is always going to happen. And there, there was going to become a time where, and again, I think we've, we've said this before, there was going to become a time where the economy became more important than people's lives. And it very much wasn't the case to start with. And, you know, fair play. To me, though, it just, wow. <clears throat> I think, I think, was it last week? I'm not entirely certain, but we, we mentioned the herd immunity um, kind of uh, yeah, approach. Know. Yeah, and it's... It, if it doesn't scream, you know, if opening pubs and stuff... Now, I, I'll, I'll admit, I don't know 
off the top of my head what are kind of figures are coronavirus figures what they look like um recently and over the over the last couple of weeks or whatever have they gone up down or whatever I, honestly i don't know what i do know is that it hasn't gone away and whilst everyone in favor of opening pubs and obviously i was in favor of uh getting the hairdressers open fucking right but then most people aren't pissed in hairdressers um you know and and to be fair the the barber i go to superb like really really well organized um really well organized with regards to how they work their appointments um there, there was nobody else there when i arrived um no that's a, that's a, that's a lie one chap had actually was actually just going round the other way and, and leaving i arrived straight in um you know barber there full ppe visor the lot um I, yeah my face mask and all that um and uh, it was all incredibly clean, tidy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That, for me, I know obviously there's some contact there, they're physically yeah. touching yeah. me, etc. But if you're smart about it, then you can take measures to kind of um, minimise you know, your risk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and that was, you know, and it was great and it was fine. And it was a, an environment which, despite it being a bit strange, um, certainly out of the ordinary, it was one where you felt like you could at least, you could be, you could be safe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously less safe than if you didn't go. And I, obviously I'm aware of that. Like, you know, but nobody's saying hide yourself in a room and never leave it. Um, unless you're vulnerable. Well, yeah, yeah. Unless you're, well, even now, it's not even vulnerable anymore. I think it's just... No, I mean, I, I have to admit, I, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with that. I, I, don't, I don't know anyone who's actually medically vulnerable, but I've heard stories about people, they call them shielders, don't they? people who are shielding i think a lot of them are very uncomfortable with the government saying you can go out now it's like on what basis yeah what on what basis what are you letting us know why am i safer now than i was three yeah. weeks ago or, or three months ago for that matter what, what? It, do you know what mike um the interesting thing that takes us on to is perception so perception is generally driven through the gatekeepers of information i.e the, the uh, legacy media the government the medical chiefs these kind of things and at the moment particularly the government seems to be silencing medical chiefs for obvious reasons and um newspapers kind of amplifying the government message now you'd be amazed at how many people will take that as gospel and not question it um you know because you can see in a lot of people's attitude as far as they're concerned the pandemic's over but uh, uh, well, an interesting, an interesting thing. I mean, just a quick anecdote. I was queuing outside the post office today, a half hour queue outside the post office, social distancing and all that. And um, these two women were ahead of me in the queue. Now, when I go to the post office, uh, as far as I know, I mean, I've got a respiratory condition, so I don't, I really don't want to contract COVID. I try and avoid it. I need to get my wrist. And now my work is good because it provides us with PPE. So I have a face mask. When I go to the post office, I, I'm going to be in an enclosed space around other people. I wear a face mask. So I walk over there, look like a bit of a fool. It's like a surgical style face mask. It's not, it's not, not fashion statement or anything. But I stand in the queue with this face mask on. The two women in front of me are considerably older, middle-aged stroke, knocking on retirement age. So they're far more at risk than I am. They're not wearing anything on their face. They're, they're completely uncovered. I'm the one with a mask. You know when... You know when someone's having a conversation and they really, 
you can tell that they're struggling for ways to maintain the conversation, but they don't want to leave it because, say, they're trapped in a queue. So they pull something out of their backside that they don't really know anything about, but they talk about it quite authoritatively, as if they do know right. about it. Okay. So this woman um, was talking about face masks, and I kind of raised an eyebrow, I was thinking, has she seen me? Like, I can clearly hear her talking. Is she going to, like, say anything sort of offensive about face masks? So she basically, what the conversation was, to wrap it up, was she was trying to basically justify the reason that she wasn't wearing a face mask. I didn't ask her for an explanation. The woman standing with her didn't ask for an explanation, but she felt the need to justify. Um, it's not just, I choose not to wear a face mask. She actually comes out with something like, oh, I've heard, um, yeah, medical experts or something, you know, the usual rubbish about, I've heard medical experts say, uh, yet yeah, the face masks don't stop coronavirus. <laughs> at, at, which, at which point I almost like, I'm almost literally face palm my own face. And I, and I was ready to say to her, like, I don't know where to begin with that kind of logic because, you know, I was tempted to say to her, do you know condoms don't stop STIs either? They're 99% effective, but they don't stop them because nothing is 100% guaranteed. The whole point in face coverings is not because it stops coronavirus, it's because it reduces the risk of transmission significantly like down to about 5% from without being sort of 80%, depending on how close you are to them. Um, and anyway, sorry, that was just an anecdote. I wasn't, I wasn't trying to say that the woman was a complete moron. What I meant was how lazily people just pluck things out of their backside and say, oh, well, I've heard this and I'm not wearing a mask because it's not effective. Right, okay, love, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know whether you've seen any situations where people just do you know what i mean their perception their perception of everything's fine now i don't need to wear a mask i'm going to justify why i'm not doing anything to mitigate the spread yeah uh, well I mean, every everything i see everything i see most days or most things i see most days resulted from people having similar um know, similar attitudes to perhaps the one that you described mm -hmm. people do you you know you are right people do think that this is this is over now um and, and do you know what it might it might be there might not be this big second wave that cripples us and fucking kills everyone in the winter and what may maybe it doesn't happen and do you know what? If it doesn't happen, fucking great. Nobody wants it to. No. Um, no. I just don't know if the right thing to do is to increase the risk of that happening. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? That is, that is definitely the thing. I, I may, maybe I was wrong in saying people's attitude is it's over. It's more like the attitude is it's a nuisance now rather than a threat. You know? People treat it as, oh, oh well... Yeah. You know, it could hurt other people, but it doesn't bother me. And I'll look like an idiot wearing a face mask, so I'm not going to bother, kind of thing. Whereas before it was like, clap for the NHS, we're making sacrifices to protect everyone. Now it's kind of every man for himself. Well, I'm not wearing a face mask. I think it should be every man for himself, actually. <laughs> Doggy. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck it. Just random knife happen. fights. Yeah. In a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Yeah, isn't that what we all dream? I think for? we do dream of that actually, uh, and and just in time for Christmas and a No Deal Brexit when there'll be a real wasteland, particularly around Dover. Well, it's been it's been interesting, Mike. Uh, some closing thoughts, by the way. Let's not Go forget on. as let's not forget as well. Leicester is obviously still in a second lockdown, so we don't know how that will turn out. I mean, for instance, how are they policing that? I haven't heard of any roadblocks. So again, it, it seems more like, again, back of a fag packet kind of, you guys don't, don't, don't you let me see you leaving Leicester. And then, oh, it's spread across the border to Nottinghamshire and oh shit. 
And I also read that the uh, reproduction rate, you know, the R rate of transmission has now crept above one in areas of London again. (laughs) Based on what we've seen in Soho, that's probably not a shock. Pretty good time to open the pubs then, really. Oh, ideal, yeah. (laughs) Where do we go from here, Mike? (laughs) Who knows what's going to happen over the next week? Stay safe, kids. I mean, you know, what else can you say? Just stay safe, whatever that means for you. And if you don't, I hope you die. (laughs) And on that note, please subscribe to Lockdown Large. (laughs) Yeah, subscribe. Anyway, yeah. Until next week, stay safe, everyone.